Hello! As you probably figured from the title of the video, I'm going to show you how to do the occupation of Magnetic Cartographer. I'm doing this with my secondary character, that's Salima. She is only grade 1, she's level 1 in this occupation. She can only produce the most basic maps, but nonetheless they are still good for sale to New Horizons transporters. But that's another topic that I'm not going to cover today. In this video I'm just going to show you very basic mechanics of how to do the occupation. So, as you noticed, I'm, this, uh, this master of the occupation is in the north of the city, in the north of Zora, very close to the exit gates. Now, I'm not I, I'm not able to show you how to take the occupation because I actually have it already. But that would be basically just clicking the first option and um, picking I want to become an apprentice. So that's not the case for me. Now this occupation has two missions. Actually all occupations have two missions. And we'll have to do them in a sequence. That's the best way of, uh, of actually doing it. The first mission involves gathering components, involves gathering fragments of maps, and the second mission involves handing in those fragments of maps for some other type of um, component, some, I believe some report or whatever. So you'll notice, I, first I will take the second mission and you'll see in a minute why You notice I have a blue flag on my map. So this is the target, this is the cartographer that I have to hand in my products from the first mission. My map uh, is, my compass is pointing to him, as you can see in the upper right corner. But that's going to change right now when I'm taking the first mission which involves obtaining apprentice magnetic cartographer components, the fragments of magnetic field maps. That's, that's a mouthful. So you can notice my compass has changed. And I also have an, a different flag for mission number one, um, telling me to go to magnetics measuring, measuring area A. So I'm going to do just that. Please go ahead and ignore this part. I'm just um, cleaning up my inventory so you can see exactly what's going on. It's easy and gently get off the stairs. For some reason the game client gets really confused. If your mech tube is running downstairs, it might reset your position a few times before it actually acknowledges you moved down the stairs. Okay, so this, um, this occupation is very easy, you just have to run around the, um, the city of Intuition's region. There are four different points that you have to visit. The game will assign randomly one point to you, you have to visit the point. When you reach that, that's the only thing you have to do, you have to reach the point. When you get there, you get um, a component for your, uh, for your occupation and then you get reassigned a new point. It might be the same one, that's lucky, that's, that's what you pray for, so, so you don't have to move around too much. But at any rate, if you do this occupation on a mount, as I do, it's going to be pretty fast. So we're heading to... As, um, as the compass says, we're heading to Magnetics measure Measurement Area Point A. And we're gonna be there in a few seconds. Practicing is really um, easy. Th there are very few aggressive mobs that are going to, to stop you. As you can see, I got reassigned the same point and I got two fragments of, uh, of, of a map. A 
aside from those two fragments, where are they? No, let's uh, fragments, fragments, fragments. There they are. I also have two analysis results. So you can probably understand now. I'm hand. I'm going to hand in this analysis results during uh, mission number two, and I'm going to get different components. That's a KP for you. Stupid sound. Okay, um, the distance between the different measurement points is not that uh, that long. At most, there's 900 meters, as you probably noticed already. But usually you're going to get assigned points that are closer to each other. It's all random, at least that's the claim from the gaming company, and I'm not going to discuss it. Just like with um, the other easy mission to do for um, for sellable stuff to New Horizons, just like the water carrier, you could easily do this while just auto running. You just press your end key and um, wait for your character to arrive at the target point while you I don't know, listen to music, watch YouTube, whatever you want to do. Depending on season, you are going to see some aggressive mobs at your target point. For instance, you have Ragus at, uh, at this one in Moss's Scarp. And um, you, might be, you might need to actually be prepared to fight them. Now, this character, this um, Salima, has 125 in a melee fight, for instance. So she's pretty able to defend herself. Her health is good, her um, dodging ability is good. As you can see in the system info, she dodged both, both attacks. But if you're a newcomer, just doing the mission for the first time, when you have like 800, 900 hit points, you might want to actually dismount and fight the Ragus. might be more efficient for you. Because as you again you maybe notice this time it was instant that, that I got the component, but sometimes you might have to wait for a bit, you might have to run around a bit. Because the point where 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 it triggers is not exact very exact. It's not precise. So while while they're just running around wiggling you might have to, you might take some damage and um, therefore it might be more efficient, as I said, to kill the mobs that are following you. Okay, now, this is not talking to me, it's not telling me what to do, but um, during your first time you, you will get the message, so you need at least four components for one practice of your occupation. I already have four components, so I might as well just head back to town. But before that, let's grab just one more, because why not? Actually, two more. That's lucky. That's nice. Come on. See, I just have to move around a bit. But eventually it triggers. Okay, that's really lucky. Four in a row. That really doesn't happen too much. But on the flip side, it did assign me the next point really far. That's almost one kilometer away. So I have a lot of components. I have eight of them. And I have to do the second mission now. So let's just, let's just go ahead and click this flag on the map. The cartographer, that's my target. And we'll be going right to him or her. I, I never remember their gender. Some of them are females, some are males, whatever. You could go into first person view if you don't want to hear that mech tube running. You might also probably want to actually turn off your sound in your game, because otherwise a lot of people tend to crash in Zora. Uh, I'm not really sure why, no one is sure, but it's an old as hell bug and turning off your sound seems to really help with it. 
So I was assigned apparently this uh, lady here. So dismount, give her. Let's see, you give her one analysis result, as I said, and instead you get a list of magnetic amplitudes, whatever that means. So, as you probably no notice, and it, it's going to make sense, you need an equal amount of um, fragments of maps, and the sum of lists of magnetic amplitudes and the analysis results must equal this. So I have 7 plus 1, that's for a total of 8. Now, running around Zora is actually easier. Distances are much shorter. At most, you might be forced to travel 200 meters between uh, cartographers. That's still a lot of distance, so I still prefer to do that on a mount, even though um, it's really doable on foot if, um, if for some reason you don't want a mount in Zora. Especially for free-to-play characters, it's, that's really an, a different discussion, but anyway, for free-to-plays it, um, it ends up being a conundrum, because your mount is your only storage, so many of them end up just um, buying one mount, keeping it in the stables, and um, as I said, use, using it as a storage. Now, this character being an alt, she doesn't have that many needs, doesn't need anything else but um, some amps, some uh, weapon, and some focus jewelry to help me with digging, to help the main character. Of course, this um, I never mentioned, but the rule is the same. You, um, you're going to get assigned a random cartographer to hand in uh, results to. You might be assigned the same cartographer even. Which again, that's nice, that's lucky, three in a row. And I have to move. I could stop right now, for instance. I have more than four um, lists of amplitudes. So I have at least four of each component. I could go and practice the occupation. I'm actually going to do right that. If, um, if I get sent to the north of the city. Two more lists. Yep, that's what I said earlier, you might be sent to the opposing corner of the city, 231 meters away. It's not even, it's not a lot, so I'm not going to bother. Okay, where's my mount? Let's set the compass to target. My mount should be right here. And actually I'm having trouble running into the spot. As you can see, it's sending me around, so my mount is somewhere right here. Welcome to Ryzen, where you can see a lot of weird bugs. Okay, so, as I said in the video description, I'm actually going to spoil the best recipe for this, because I'm not really ready to use a stupid recipe that is it's not giving a full yield just for a, just because you might be spoiled. So, feel free to skip this if you, if you want to find stuff on your own, that's fine. So, what do you do? You have to pick the mission for your grade. 
Improving components is something I'm never going to touch. It's mostly useful if your grade is 6, if you have very good components and you want to make them the best. So if you're grade 6 and you improve your components, you make them grade 7, you make them Q70. That's some stuff that you can't get anywhere else in the game, so you might try that if you think it's worth the effort. However, at grade 1, if I was to improve components, I would get Q15 instead of Q10. It's not too much, I might as well just um, improve myself, I might just um, practice and go to grade 2, and um, that would be nicer. I would actually get Q20 components and Q20 products. There's no point improving just to get Q15. So, I'm practicing grade 1. It's asking me, yes, I want to use basic components. You can see the icon changed, so I have to trade something with um, this, uh, this object, with this map of magnetic fields. So I give two items, it pre-fills in, both fragments and lists. Okay, and now it's um, going to ask me a bunch of stuff. I'm not really sure what's the point of that, but anyway, the recipe, the best combination is 22412. So that's support, then bark, scale, colors, black and blue, um, I might have actually gotten that wrong, I believe. I actually did. I got one point wrong. I clicked two too many times. I should have clicked four at during step three. So, because I got one step wrong, I have a percentage of 97%. That's 97% yield. That's 15 products. Full yield would be 18 products. Now, leaving the maps would get me some experience. I'm pressing Shift W to pull up the web in-game interface. So occupations shows me that in order to do magnetic cartographer, so I, ha I am at grade one and I have one point of experience. I need 30 points of experience to advance to grade two, which means I need, if I were to practice two days in a row, getting even 15 instead of 18 products, and if I left the maps, I would get 30 experience in total, advancing me to grade 2, allowing me to gather more, um, better components, higher quality, and they are yielding better final products, better maps. Instead, I'm going to keep the maps for myself. You can see them in, uh, in my inventory. I already had one map, I believe. So that's 16 instead of 15. By the way, the stuff that I moved to my mount earlier is just um, just more components. I, I've done missions 1 and 2 a lot of times. Okay, now that I'm done practicing, there's a cooldown of 20 hours for, for this mission. Actually, 21 hours, it seems. So I might as well just abandon these missions, unless of course you're planning to do some more. could always continue doing the missions. You could spend one Sunday gathering components for the whole week, so you don't have to waste your time when you come, when you come home tired or whatever. Okay, I don't need this mount anymore actually. And I'm going to hand in these products in, uh, in the desert, since this character is actually Fyros aligned, so that's the best place for me to do it. You can do that in any desert city, there's no limitation. You, might, you could go to Pyre if you wanted, but I like Thesos and Dyron because actually New Horizons is uh, closer. 
and finally you would have to run all the way from the Kami TP to the north gate where they placed the transporter, so no thanks. Hello mister, yes I would like to sell you some stuff. Of course he does not need products for the moment, so I'm going to show you a trick. This might actually get changed because someone <laughs> made this public. That's apparently what happened in the past with a lot of semi-bugs. So you ask the person, you ask the NPC to transport you, and on this step you just change your mind. You just don't answer. You don't want to actually go anywhere. Just do this a couple of times. Each time you you click that, it, uh, it creates a need for more products. Apparently that's, um, that's the checks and balances system behind the scenes. You have to... On one hand you have players giving products, on another hand you have players actually using the system, which erodes the available resources. So, so if there's no need for more products, you just uh, create artificially a need for more. Now, I tried a few times, so I want to help you. Yes, sir. Okay, I can hand in some Q60 products. Of course, I'm not going to do that. They're actually good. They restore a lot of life and stamina. That's good for um, solo traveling, for instance. Instead, I'm going to give in my 16 boring maps of Q10. There's this icon, you might have seen it, or maybe you didn't. And then System Info confirms, that's a new improvement by the way, it confirms I received some dappers and some Firos faction points. The amount of dappers and the faction points depends on your fame, at fame 99 or 100. You get 10,000 points per product, that's 160,000 dappers of course, for 16 products, and 3,200 faction, Firos faction points. Again, that's a lot, and pretty much that's it for, um, for Magnetic Cartographer. Of course, as I said, you can tweak a lot of things, you can do the missions as many times as, as you want, you can keep going for as long as you want, you could even go on for like 8 hours, and when the mission expires you just go ahead and take it again, it's not going to, to complain. But of course that's really boring and I, I don't believe anyone ever does that. So until next time, I suppose this would be goodbye.